Namaste and welcome everyone. Today's topic is Basics of Communication and Introduction. Let's start. Let's first see the definition of communication. The term communication refers to the process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals. What is communication? The term communication refers to the process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals. And what is information? Information refers to the facts, ideas, feelings and opinions, etc. that can be communicated by one individual to another. Whatever we know, believe or feel about the world and wish to share with others is information. So what is communication? The term communication refers to the process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals. The process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals. General versus professional communication. A distinction is often made between general communication and professional or business communication. General communication is the kind of communication that goes on in ordinary everyday situations and is mostly social in nature. An example of general communication would be two friends uh, talking to each other about weather or about a cricket match which they have just witnessed. Professional or business communication is, as the name suggests, communication that is related to the professional or business world. The world of commerce and industry, of buying and selling, demand and supply, etc. In short, the practical world of economic activity. The differences between general and professional communication are differences only of degree and not of kind. Everything that is true of general communication is true also of professional communication. The principles are the same. However, because of globalization and the proliferation of business activities across the world, communication has become much more of an urgent need in the business world than it ever was before. Certain problems which may go unnoticed in general communication can get dramatically highlighted in the context of business communication and can cause unforeseen consequences. It is for this reason that everyone seems to be interested in communication now and future engineers and business managers are required to undergo courses in communication. So what is communication? The term communication refers to the process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals. What is information? Information refers to the facts, ideas, feelings and opinions, etc. that can be communicated by one individual to another, whatever we know, believe or feel about the world and wish to share with others is information. And communication refers to the process by which information is exchanged or shared between two or more individuals.
now let's come to the process of communication for communication to take place there must be two or more participants taking part in an exchange of information the process of communication begins when one participant sends or gives some information to the other participant or participants and the term sender is used to refer to the first participant while the term receiver is used for the other participant or participants we also use the terms encoder and decoder for the sender and receiver respectively in spoken communication the sender is referred to as the speaker and the receiver as the listener while in written communication they are referred to as the writer and reader respectively <clears throat> those so the sender is also known as encoder in spoken communication sender is referred to as the speaker and in written communication the sender is referred to as the writer while the receiver is also called decoder and in spoken communication re receiver is referred to as the listener while in written communication the receiver is called the reader the following events take place during the process of communication <clears throat> first the sender selects the idea or ideas which he or she wishes to communicate to the receiver the sender selects the idea before the process of communication begins ideas exist in the mind of the sender as well as the receiver in vague shadow forms the sender first gives a clear shape to these ideas this st this stage is referred to as ideation the birth of an idea simultaneously the sender converts ideas mentally into the words of a language and this process is referred to as and coding during the process of encoding the sender also combines words together to form sentences through which messages are generally communicated so what happens first in the process of communication the sender selects the idea or ideas which he or she wishes to communicate to the receiver and before the process of communication begins ideas exist in the mind of the sender as well as the receiver in vague shadow forms the sender first gives a clear shape to these ideas and this stage is referred to as ideation the birth of an idea simultaneously the sender converts ideas mentally into the words of a language and this process is referred to as encoding and during the process of encoding the sender also combines words together to form sentences through which messages are generally communicated what happens next the words or sentences are either spoken or written by the sender so that they can reach the receiver in oral communication words are converted into sound waves which travel through the air to the ears of the receiver 
and in written communication words are converted into visible marks made on paper or some other medium and are read by the receiver what happens next when the receiver receives the message sent by the sender in either spoken or written form he or she reconverts the words mentally into the meanings the receiver receives the message sent by the sender and he or she reconverts the words into the meanings which the sender was trying to communicate through words these meanings are stored in the receiver's short term memory and this process is known as decoding where the receiver receives the message sent by the sender and reconverts the words into the meanings receivers rarely remember the actual words used by the sender if asked to recollect the sender's words the receiver will usually replace them with different words although the meaning is retained and this shows that receivers are focused on meanings rather than the words through which they are communicated what happens next after the receiver has received the sender's message he or she will usually let the sender know whether or not the message has been received and understood and this is known as feedback which can be provided in different ways often but not always the sender and the receiver exchange roles after one phase of communication is over the receiver now becomes the sender and the sender becomes the receiver let's revise communication process can be defined as a procedure that is used to impart a message or information from a sender to a receiver by using a medium of communication the message goes through five stages when it is sent by the sender to the receiver and these stages are as follows sender the sender is the entity that conveys or sends the message at this stage an idea thought or feeling is formulated in the mind of the sender as a result of an external or internal stimulus or motivation message is what is being transmitted from sender to receiver encoding is a process through which the message is symbolized it involves giving the message a communication form channel channel is the medium through which the message is being sent the sender selects the most appropriate and effective vehicle that will deliver the message to the receiver and communication channels may include websites letters emails phone conversations video conferences and face to face meetings receiver is the entity that receives the message and decoding is the process in which the message is translated and meaning is generated out of it feedback is the process through which receiver sends his response effective communication 
relies on selecting an appropriate communication channel for your message. Selecting the wrong communication channel can cause communication obstacles including information overload and inadequate feedback. The effectiveness of communication channels can be evaluated based on richness and opportunity for feedback. <clears throat> Effective communication results from a combination of insights or knowledge, skills and values. Several different kinds of insights are required for effective communication. First, psychological insights into human nature and behavior. An understanding of how people behave in different circumstances and how behavior can be influenced through interaction. Second, sociological insights into patterns of social organization and understanding of how societies are constituted and how social circumstances influence behavior. Third, linguistic insights and understanding of language works to aid communication. Cultural insights, a sympathetic understanding of the prevailing culture in a society. So effective communication results from a combination of insights, skills and values. And different kinds of insight required are psychological insight, sociological insights, linguistic insights, and cultural insights. However, it is not enough to possess these kinds of knowledge. They have to be developed into practical skills by participating actively in different kinds of communication. But neither knowledge nor skills will enable us to become effective communicators unless we have the right attitudes and values. Effective communication requires a positive attitude to social relationships as well as a respect for other human beings. The conviction that communication is desirable in itself regardless of the practical ends and purposes that it can serve. Thank you.